Uh, now, from uh, giants of the road to behemoths of the sea, last week a landmark moment for British marine engineering took place. Uh, these were the incredible scenes as a, a new ferry was launched to rapturous applause, of course, in the Clyde. Yeah, Andy Kershaw went to meet the dedicated team getting Britain's shipbuilding industry back afloat. The River Clyde in Scotland. This area has a rich 300-year history of shipbuilding. At its peak, in the early part of the 20th century, a fifth of all new ships in the world was built here. But by the year 2000, the industry had fallen into decline. Orders dried up, business went overseas, and three years ago, Scotland's last remaining commercial shipyard, Ferguson Marine, faced closure. Now, after years riding the waves of uncertainty, they're hoping to bring back the glory days of British marine engineering. They're building two huge new ferries that will take cars and passengers between the mainland and surrounding Scottish islands. Today is significant, as the first one is having its captain's wheelhouse fitted to the hull. Billionaire Jim McCall is behind the company's resurrection. Jim, why was it so important to you to save this shipyard? There's a great history of shipbuilding in the River Clyde, and I thought it would have been criminal to let this go. There's a great market in the UK, particularly for passenger ferries, tugs, all different types of boats. Could this be an example for um, the rest of the country? You know, that's the sad thing. Most of the yards which are natural harbours or, you know, good quayside facilities have been built on for yuppie flats or cafes, bars, and there's very few shipyards left. And I think we're probably um, under capacity for shipbuilding in the UK. Jim's invested £25 million in the company to completely rebuild the yard. One of the designers working on the new ferries is Louise Larkin. It's hard to believe, but just two years ago, she was working at a bank. Louise, it's not a well-trodden career path from banking into shipbuilding. What made you want to do this? I've always been interested in engineering growing up. I've always been a bit of a tomboy. I didn't feel like when I was in the bank, it, it was me set for life. So I feel like I wanted a, a career that I enjoyed. What kind of work are you doing? I would design the pipes and the layouts, and then we give the drawing out to the pipe shop for them to manufacture and assemble onto the ship. You miss banking? Not at all, no. Louise is one of 37 apprentices Jim has employed. He's hoping that a new generation of shipbuilders will help revive the industry. When Louise first started, she joined a completely male workforce. What was it like being the only woman working in the shipyard? It's quite daunting to start with. People were a bit sceptical that could I do the job that the boys could do. But once they seen that I was more than capable in college and on the yard, I quickly got to respect. There are now eight women working amongst the 400 strong workforce. Hey. Hey. Father and son, Ronnie and Stuart Emerson, are on the production line. Their family have worked on ships here for four generations. And Ronnie, why has shipbuilding been so important to your family? You get a wee buzz when your own family starts in the yard. I mean, you could ask any of the workforce in here, they've all had family that's been part of shipbuilding. It must feel great that shipbuilding's back on the Clyde. Oh, it's brilliant to have a job, but it's even better to have a job that you're secure in. It's time to fit that wheelhouse, and it's a massive undertaking, as it weighs 15.7 tonnes. There's no opportunity for adjustment. He's now got to drop that absolutely precisely in position, because you can't shuffle it around afterwards Veteran Ronnie and apprentice Louise have joined me to watch the action. Do you feel rather proud of your involvement with this? I do, knowing that we were part of building it. It's a good moment for everybody, you know, especially the workforce when you see that going on. It looks more like a ship. The wheelhouse slots beautifully into place and the ferry is starting to take shape. Jim's confident that work for the shipyard will continue to come in and he's hopeful some of that will come from the Ministry of Defence. They've announced that production on five new Navy frigates will be shared out among shipyards across the UK. We've been approved as a supplier for the, the new shipbuilding strategy and I'm fairly confident that we'll be part of that. There's certainly a fresh sense of hope among the people on the River Clyde and they're optimistic for the future of the shipping industry here. Everybody's buoyant when they talk about it. You can go for a walk with your dog and 
some people will say, oh, how's what happened in the year this week, Ronnie, you know? How's the shed coming along? Oh, how's it coming along? <laughs> what date's the launch? Yeah. It's a really exciting time just now. It's really important to everybody. It gets, puts a time on the map. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Andy. We were just saying it's great to see Britain building ships again, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, without a doubt. I mean, when you think, obviously, there's an enormous amount of sea out there. It's got to be yeah, the future. Exactly. Getting your cars abroad, this, that and the other. So, yes. Yeah. Keep building, keep building. Uh,